Hello, hello, hello everyone. If you are watching this, then you missed day two, sorry, day one of our week three computer science principles class. Let's get to it. So we are finishing up traversals and we're starting our hackathon project, which is a big practice project for the AP exam. As you hopefully know, your exam for this class is composed of two sections, one a multiple choice 76 question two hour exam, and the other being an independent project, but not so independent because you're actually allowed to collaborate on it. So this is going to simulate that experience, I hope. You have two assignments. One is traversals make due Wednesday, that's tomorrow the 17th. We've been over this in class today, so if you have any troubles, please make sure you email me and I'll be happy to help you out. The other one being the hackathon project, that's going to be due next week, Wednesday the 24th. You have one week to complete it. Um, and I will be explaining that throughout that project throughout the day today. We started off with a quick warm up, which was to figure out if a knight can do a knight's tour, which is visiting every single square of this board. If you start in this bottom left, can it end up in this square as its last square after visiting every other square on the board? Turns out the answer is no. And the reason that it's no is every time you make a jump, you have to go to a different color than the one you're on. So if you start on black, you have to go to white, and then black, and then white, and so on and so forth. If you start at a black square, which A1 is, and you want to end up on a black square, you would need to do an even number of moves. However, the chessboard has 64 spaces, so this would be your 63rd move if you wanted to visit every single one only once. So this is actually impossible. What's the point? Well, a computer would have a really tough time solving this. It would need to try every single possible traversal of this board. It would be very inefficient. It's much better to attack this with some intuition. You as a programmer, you need to have intuition. Your computer has none, so you can solve these really difficult problems that your computer can't, but you have to be a little bit clever about it. The second point is, this is a really difficult issue if you tackle it head on. Sometimes you have to think outside the box and have to take a step back if you want to arrive at a solution without wasting too much time, like this place. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the project. So the project is as follows. You're going to create an application. The application is up to you completely. There are only a few requirements. You have to have at least three screens. So you can have if it's a game, like a start screen, a game screen, a game over screen, it's going to be a cookbook, you know, your cover, your cookbook screen, your back cover, I don't know, whatever you want to do, but at least three screens. You have to use a data set. So to use a data set, let's go ahead and just go to code.org here. I'm going to sign in and I'm going to click the projects bar at the top. I'm going to create a brand new App Lab project, which is what you should do to do this project, or you can do it in the uh, bubble 14, it's up to you how you want to do it. But if you click data over here on the left, there are all kinds of options. You need to pick one of these data sets that you'd like to work with. Totally up to you which one you want to go with, but you do have to pick at least one. You have to traverse that data set. I don't care how you traverse it, you can map it, reduce it, or filter it. I'll talk about those in a second. But you have to meaningfully filter, go through and figure out what you want from the data set. You have to have variables, functions, conditionals, loops, and loops. If you do the above requirements, meaning you traverse through the list, you will have used all of those constructs. Uh, you have to have comments. Please don't make me take off a point for comments. That makes me so sad. All element IDs have meaningful names, and there's no errors in your code. Now, you can work on this project with a partner. To get to this project description, you can go to Mind CPS and look under week three. It is posted there. This is assignment 051701. Now, this assignment description is really long. I give you a planning guide. You do not have to fill this out. I don't grade it, but it is a tool that you can use, and I recommend that you do use to make this easier on yourself. So what database or data set rather do you plan to use? How are you going to go through it? Are you going to look for specific elements that you're interested in from the larger data set? Are you going to do some kind of change to each element? 
Or are you going to tabulate them in some way and create maybe an average, a single output from the whole set? What are you going to do? Then I recommend you draw out your plan. I think this really helps figure out exactly what you're going to do. From there, I would list all of your element IDs, your variables, your conditionals, your loops, your on events, and your functions. After you're done, please make sure you hit share at the top and give me the link to your project. If you don't do this, I cannot grade it. So please make sure you do that. And then I will talk about these written responses next time. But in case you're really curious, these are AP project style questions with really specific uh, requirements. You can see the requirements down here in the rubric. Also note the rubric. Each line is worth one point. There is no partial credit. This is exactly how the AP exam is going to be scored. You either get the point or you don't. There's no gray area or no partial points whatsoever. So you need to make sure you address each line of the AP rubric very carefully so that there's no reason for you to lose points. I highly recommend you read through this rubric. I'm not going to read it to you. Suffice to say, there's 20 points total and the actual task parts here refer to the questions. So as long as you address all of these, you'll have answered the questions correctly. And I'll go more in depth about those next time. If you have any questions about the assignment, please make sure you send me an email. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by and I'll see you next class.